Hi everyone, my name is Matt Anderson and this video is about renewable diesel, specifically that renewable diesel is not a synonym for biodiesel. And I created this video for the column email newsletter. It's a newsletter that exists on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn and you search for the column, that'll get you there. And just a little bit about me. So my name is Matt Anderson and I'm a PE in chemical engineering license in California. I have four years of refinery work experience in process engineering and operations and zero work experience with renewable diesel. So maybe you'll turn this video off right now, but uh, I can tell you I learned a lot by doing some research and hopefully this video is useful, useful to at least a couple of people out there. So renewable diesel is a drop in replacement for conventional diesel. Biodiesel is only approved for blending. If you remember nothing else from this video, those two sentences will, that'll summarize it. So existing diesel engines, they can run 100% renewable diesel but they can only use a percentage of biodiesel. So no modifications to diesel engines are, are required to use renewable diesel. And that there has, there's an exclamation point because that is very significant. And so if you think about gasoline powered cars, uh, gasoline sold in the United States has a percentage of ethanol blended into it typically. And uh, that would be more, cons more like biodiesel than renewable diesel. Um, renewable diesel would be like you can run your car on 100% ethanol basically at that point. Uh, so for renewable diesel, it is chemically identical to conventional diesel. You cannot say that about biodiesel. And so the definition that renewable diesel has to meet is ASTM D975, and that's in the U.S., or EN590 in Europe. And then ASTM is the American Society for Testing Materials. It seems like there's a standard for almost anything uh, if you look for it. And so feedstocks for renewable diesel are biomass, uh, such as used cooking oils, animal fats, and inedible corn oil from ethanol plants. I think that's pretty cool that you can make ethanol and then the waste product you have left over, you're now able to convert that into renewable diesel. And then biodiesel, so most existing engines, they cannot run on 100% biodiesel. And so you typically is sold in, in blends, so maybe it's a 10% or 20% blend. That little picture I have off to the right shows a 20% blended biodiesel. And it's not chemically identical to the conventional diesel fuel. And the actual chemical composition is long chain fatty acid esters. If you don't remember what an ester is, that's okay. I actually forgot too, but I have a slide in the, that's going to clear that up in a moment. And it meets ASTM D6751. Once again, that's the definition. If you need to know exactly what is a biodiesel, that's where you can start. And it's a fuel comprised of monoalkyl esters of long chain fatty acids derived from vegetable oils or animal fats. So now we get into the processes that make renewable diesel and biodiesel. So for renewable diesel, there's three main ones, and those are hydrotreating, isomerization, and distillation. And those three are extremely familiar to anyone who's worked in the downstream oil and gas industry. And so if you look at hydrotreating, that's where you replace the oxygen molecules with hydrogen. And I also mentioned that you can remove contaminants such as sulfur. In a refinery, you're typically looking to get rid of the sulfur and you're replacing it with hydrogen. Um, and so for renewable diesel, as I mentioned, that biodiesel, you end up with a lot of those esters, which has oxygen you end up converting some of those, removing the oxygen and your, um, to get rid of those esters and you're replacing them with hydrogen. Uh, isomerization, so you're gonna rearrange molecules to optimize diesel flow properties. And in a refinery, this would be like taking normal butane and making isobutane. And distillation, that's just separation to final product by boiling points. And then biodiesel, transesterification, which is very different than what uh, any process in the refinery. And that's where you're gonna react that vegetable oil with alcohol, and then you use a, uh, typically an acid catalyst as well. And you'll end up with a process that yields uh, methyl esters, uh, biodiesel, and glycerin, or glycerol, which is used in many products such as soap. Here we go, chemistry for the nerds. And I can say that because I am a nerd, so then it's, then it's okay. But uh, if you look at biodiesel, a monoalkyl ester, you know, what is that? Well, mono, mono is single, alkyl is a straight chain with only single bonds, and then ester is where you have an acid where at least one hydroxyl group is replaced by an alkoxy. And so if you prefer pictures, you can just ignore the words and you can look over here, this is an ester. So an ester, it's, you can classify it by the COO functional group. And if this R uh, with a dash is replaced by a hydrogen, then you consider this a carboxylic acid. Um, so it's no longer a carboxylic acid because it has this alkoxy group here. And so that would be considered an ester. Sometimes the COO uh, functional group can be considered an ester chain or ester link. And um, so renewable diesel does not have ester compounds. So once again, you have esters in uh, biodiesel. You do not have them in uh, renewable diesel. And once again, that oxygen is removed through hydroprocessing. And then a few companies that are involved in re renewable diesel in the United States and uh, worldwide. And this is 
very far from a comprehensive list. This is just the first couple that came to mind. Valero. Um, so once again, I have zero work experience with renewable diesel, but Valero has a joint venture with Darley Ingredients called Diamond Green Diesel. And there's a functional plant right now in St. Charles, Louisiana, and there's an announced plant, uh, a large one in Port Arthur, Texas. Phillips 66, they have plans to convert the San Francisco, California refinery to renew renewable fuels. And Marathon plans to convert their Martinez, California refinery to renewable fuels. So the Phillips 66 and Marathon are actually pretty close together. They're both in Northern California. And worldwide, uh, Neste is the world's largest producer of renewable diesel. It's actually a very old company. They go back 70 years and they're based out of Finland. Uh, but back in 2005, um, they actually decided to uh, focus on renewable diesel, um, which is interesting because that was really before there was much of a market for renewable diesel at all. So if you want to learn more about those companies, you can uh, search them out. And I've included some, uh, some work cited as well that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so to learn more about renewable diesel, you can uh, look at Valero's website, which is uh, very helpful. I uh, you know, started there and was able to learn a couple of the, the basic facts. And then for biodiesel, uh, I recommend biodiesel.org. They have a nice article about the basics of biodiesel. Uh, my work cited, you can pause here and try and type those in if you'd like to, uh, to find any of my sources. And then once again, just the links for LinkedIn. So you can find me, Matt Anderson 11, or you can look for the column and uh, overall, I like to post content that's helpful, especially for uh, chemical engineering students, uh, maybe young professionals. Um, I, I don't consider myself an expert, I, but I, I do just have a little more experience. I definitely have more experience than when I was a student. And so I like to kind of provide some insight into what industry is like and what's important and hopefully provide some more context for some of those classes. So you can kind of understand a fluid dynamics or heat and mass transfer or uh, kinetics. You know, why am I learning this? You know, when, what is a situation where I'm actually going to need this? And I think that I have some of those answers now, at least more than I did when I was taking those classes. Uh, and then the column is a great newsletter to stay up to date on uh, chemical process, industry news. Um, but overall, thanks for watching. Thanks.